Okay, I'm Steve Mays from Soulwise, and what I'd like to do now is a quick video giving an uh, underbonnet GUI look at the ENS620 EXT product from Ingenious. Now, the ENS620 EXT is one of the newer products from Ingenious, and essentially it's a dual band, so that means it's 2.4 gig and 5 gig outdoor uh, Wi Fi device. Now, each of the bands, be it the 2.4 or the 5, can be independently controlled, independently set up as either access point or bridge mode, for example. So, one particularly useful application for it is you might want to set it up whereby you have a number of these, remember, a number of these where the 5 gig band is acting as a bridge backbone and the 2.4 is acting as a local distribution for client devices. Uh, it's also a Way 2 product on the 5 gig, operating 11 AC speeds up to 867 meg, which gives a theoretical uh, maximum true throughput of around about 400 meg, depending upon free spectrum interference, line of sight, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, just show you a quick picture of the product, because I th just recently started looking at this product, and I think it's really nicely built product. It's very, very nicely constructed. It's our alloy back, and very, very nice piece of a kit. So, ENS620 EXT. Let's go look at its GUI. So, like most of the ingenious products, it's on its default address of 192.161.1, and the default login is admin. Admin, enter. I'm not going to bother saying that. So, default status screen is the first thing that comes up. And you can tell how new this product is because we've got exciting firmware version 1. So, um, very new product on the streets. Been selling it, I suppose, for about three months now. Um, a few dozen gone out the door so far. Not had any bad feedback, so it seems to be quite a good product. Not much of most ingenious products are. Uh, also, you can see out of the box, this has Netherlands as the country. Um, and uh, if we go down, basically, we've got both interfaces by default out of the box set in access point mode. That's both the 2.4 and the 5 gig. So let's go through the setup screens of interest. So the probably first thing you want to look at is basic network. So this is where you can set up the IP settings to suit your network. So change the IP address to match your particular range that you're using. You could use DHCP, not a big fan of DHCP for infrastructure products because it makes them hard to find on the network. So my advice is pick a static address outside your more usable range. I'll leave it on 1.1 for the purpose of this. Let's go to wireless now. This is where the action is. Right. So, first thing you're probably going to want to change is you're probably going to want to change it from Netherlands to UK. Now, this doesn't make a big difference because now Europe have actually um, towed the line and now all their uh, Wi-Fi bands and Wi-Fi channels, RF power and that sort of thing, have now towed the line and now in conformance with the UK. Good to see the EU actually following the UK for a change rather than us towing, the, uh, towing behind them. So, anyway, so we'll change it to United Kingdom anyway. Um, now, um, I'll look at band steering in a minute because that doesn't, that depends upon what we do down here. So, out of the box, you could have this running as an access point on 2.4 and an access point on uh, 5 gig. Um, the operational mode, therefore, would be access point. Access point. Other operational modes we've got for both interfaces are client bridge, WDS access point, uh, and a WDS bridge and WDS station. So, for example, you could have the 2.4 as an access point and have the 5 as a WDS bridge. So that way you could actually bridge on the 5 gig backbone and use 2.4 for local coverage. So let's just assume that we're going to do that. Um, and show what you'd have to go through the settings. So um, for 2.4 gig access point mode, you can leave all this as default. As far as the um, HT mode for the 5 gig, it's for 11 AC, you want to be kicking 80 meg. Now, there's these box called green. What basically green means is, do you want this to force you to lock into the channels and the RF power commensurate with your country region that you've chosen at the top. 
Uh, my advice is, yes, you want to be running legal, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, other thing you want to look at after you've actually set this first stage up is look at the channel configuration. So the channels are split into two parts. You've got the 2.4 gig, and the default is all. I use any available channel. On the 5 gig, now, by default, there are two bands for 5 gig that we need to be looking at. There's this lower band, which is 36, 40, 44, 48. So these are the low 80 meg wide bands. And then we have 100, 100, 400, 812, which are the high 80 meg bands. Now, for outdoor use in the UK and the EU, you're not allowed to use these low bands. These low bands are for indoor use only. So if you're going to be using this as an outdoor device with the 5 gig as a WDS bridge, um, or even as an access point, you need to be picking one of these higher bands. So, for example, you could pick channel 100 for the 5 gig. So you can at 2.4 use anything you can find, but we'll set the uh, 5 gig to 100. And now we'll save that. Other things that you may want to change with this configuration is you'll probably want to go and play around with the 2.4 gig um, SSID. Notice it supports a whole big pile of different SSIDs, so you can have multiple different SSIDs, each with different Wi-Fi settings, VLAN settings, isolation, blah, blah, blah. By default, only the first SSID is enabled, but we'll click on Edit and show you what you can do on there. So, on the each uh, SSID, you can get the whole range of all the different security options for the Wi-Fi. You've got access control list, and you've also got traffic shaping per SSID, which can be for the whole of the SSID or per user on the SSID. So. Nice useful functions there for configuring each SSID. I'm not interested in changing anything for these demo videos, so I'll just cancel that. If we go down to the 5 gig, now if we set this in access point mode, we'll see an exact same bunch of settings and configuration for the 5 gig, i.e. a number of different SSIDs, and we can go and change them. Uh, because we're using a bridge mode for the 5 gig, we've got a slightly different set of options down here. Uh, so in WDS bridge mode, the way it works is uh, each bridging unit that it needs to bridge to needs to have the MAC address configured into it of the device it's going to bridge to. So you've got a device A, a device B. To bridge between those two units, A needs to have the MAC address of B, and B needs to have the MAC address of A. Nice and easy. I'm surprised how many people get that wrong. Now you notice there's option here for eight different MAC addresses, so this device theoretically could bridge with eight devices, eight other devices, simultaneously. So to set up a bridge, all we need to do is enable the uh, MAC address field, and in here we'd put the MAC address of the unit that we need to bridge to, or, multiple units, the MAC addresses of the units we want to bridge to. So, anyway, I haven't got any MAC addresses, but I'm just going to leave those fields blank for the time being. But obviously it wouldn't work until I put something new in there. Let's continue down here. So down here you can see, because the 2.4 is acting as an access point, we have a guest network option on that uh, 2.4 gig network. So, if I click Enable there, and I click on Edit, so here we can see we actually have the, a similar bunch of settings for the guest network. So what Wi-Fi security do you want for it? And do you actually do any access control or limitation on it? I won't worry about that at the time being. The other thing to look at under the guest network is we have these IP settings. So the way the guest network works is uh, each access point is acting as its own little private Wi-Fi router for the guests. Uh, so the good thing about that is if you've got two access points, an A and a B, the guests on A are isolated from the main network and from the guests on B. So you get good isolation using the guest network settings. Uh, so if you are going to use the guest network, you need to put some IP addresses that you want to dish out for those guests. You can leave that as default, doesn't really matter. Um, now, uh, let's um, Right. 
Now the final thing here, yet again, this doesn't really matter if we are using um, a 5 gig as a bridge. Um, so we've got two values here. We've got a thing called RSSI threshold. So it doesn't matter for the 5 gig because we're using it as a bridge. What it means oh, in, uh, is if the device as an access point detects a weak client signal, what it does is it kicks that client off that access point. Now what in principle that should do is it should force the client to have a look around and hopefully find a better access point for it to connect to. So quite a useful feature if you've got access clients that are sticking to access points even though they're getting a rubbish signal and there is a better access point nearby. The only thing you have to ensure is that obviously they really do have a better access point to connect to. If you were to enable this and the client that caused the client to be kicked off but then there's not a decent access point for the uh, client to connect to, what it will do is it will come back and try to connect to this one again and it will keep on getting kicked off, reconnect, kicked off, reconnect, blah, blah, blah. So use it with care. I so said there's a similar setting for 5 gig, but that's immaterial when you're using a bridge mode. Um, so that's all you would need to set up if you were going to use this as an access point slash bridge device. Now let's just go through and see if things change if we have both as an access point. So if we set up both as an access point, the first thing you notice is this thing called band steering. Now what band steering means is if a device tries to connect to the 2.4, client device tries to connect to the 2.4, what the um, 620 will do is it will analyze the client to see if the client is capable of doing 5 gig. If it is, it will go through one of three different options to force that client onto the 5 gig. Uh, so you may say, well, I'll try to force it onto the 5 gig in order to lower the balance, or before, uh, because I would prefer it to be on 5 gig for channel distribution, uh, client load, that sort of thing. So um, quite a useful thing to have because there's lots of spare channels. Well, there's more spare channels on the 5 gig and there's higher bandwidth on the 5 gig. So really, you would prefer to have the clients pushed onto the 5 gig rather than sat there on the 2.4. So, you'd probably want to do that. And if we continue down the settings, so as I say, before we just showed you, or I just showed you the SSID for the 2.4, now because we've got the 5 gig as access point, we have a similar bunch of settings for the 5 gig operation. And if we come down here, we now have two guest options shown, one for the 2.4 and one for the 5. Uh, obviously now the RSSI threshold for the 5 gig might become a relevant option that you want to play with. So that shows you all, as a quick rundown of all the wireless settings you'll probably want to do on it. Uh, to be honest, um, I think it's really easy to set up. It's hard to go wrong. Um, so let's skip to some of the other screens now. So we'll just quickly fly through those other screens. So um, under uh, management, we've got the various SNMP settings, etc., etc., etc. And at the bottom, we have uh, email alert capability. So an email of the administrator if, it, if uh, something goes wrong with the net with the device or the network. Uh, we've got time zones set the time of the device, we've got a Wi-Fi scheduler so you can do rebooting if you need to, shouldn't need to in my opinion, but you can if you need to. Uh, more importantly and more relevant, you've got this thing whereby you've got Wi-Fi scheduler so you can actually turn off uh, bands and SSN, SSIDs at certain times of day. So you may want to turn off the Wi-Fi out of office hours or uh, in the evening or something like that. Tools, normal pings and all that sort of thing. Um, account, change the default login details, a usual page for firmware upgrade and factory settings, and finally a page to actually show you the, uh, the log capability, uh, the log of what's been going on in the device. Now, uh, so we'll just go back to here. So the first, one final point I need to make with this product, which is pretty much the same with all the ingenious products so far, um, all these changes that we've been doing are saved into the device, save, save current settings, but not applied to the device. 
This is quite a nice feature with the modern Ingenious product because it means unlike traditionally where every time you did a change you had to apply and wait for the darn thing to reboot, with the Ingenious products you can now do save up all the changes and apply them in one go. So if I click on changes, I can just click on apply now and it will go through and apply all those in this case, only three changes have actually done, been done from the default. So we can apply those three changes, and we'll only have to sit around for one session of, I don't know, one to two minutes while it applies the session to the reboot. I won't bother doing that. There's no point in us just sat here twiddling our thumbs for 90 seconds. So, but if we wanted to do it, we just click on apply, and it'll go through and do it. So, uh, that's the setup of the ENS620 EXT. Nice piece of kit. I would quite like it. I like the functions and the build quality is really, really good. And that's it. Thank you.